Good day there viewers and welcome to my channel called Vintage Time. My name is Cliff and I'm a gem cutter from Australia. I would personally like to welcome you to an entire series of gem cutting for dummies and this series will be quite long and we will be looking at every aspect of how to cut a gemstone. So this series is really targeted at those people who've never cut a gem in their life or you're a novice or a beginner. So the first episode in this series is called Part 1 The Machine. In the past many people have made comments on my YouTube channel when they watch me cut a gemstone and they have no idea what this type of machine is. They often refer to it as the cutter, the cutting machine, but as a gem cutter most of us call this type of machine, as you can see, a faceting machine. Now this faceting machine you're looking at is a, an Australian machine. It's called a Facet Star. It was manufactured in Melbourne, Australia over 30 years ago and I've used this machine for quite a long time. Recently I just purchased another machine which is an older machine also. It's called a Gem Master 2 and that is also made in Australia and it was made in South Australia. But first up I thought I would show you this particular fastening machine which has a mast on it. So this is a very typical machine that most people would probably buy as your startup machine. So as I take you for a tour of my faceting machines, I should mention that there are many other faceting machines manufactured all over the world. So this model, the Facet Star, is just one of many hundreds that can be purchased or bought brand new or on the second hand market. One of the most common questions I get asked all the time is what type of machine should I buy? And I always say the same thing, I always recommend that people buy a machine that is manufactured in the country they live in. Also buy a machine that you can actually afford and a machine that can be serviced or where certain parts can be replaced. In Australia currently there are two manufacturers of machines which is the Halls and they're still manufacturing those and this is one of their models. The Gem Master is not manufactured at the moment but hopefully they will start up again and this is my machine and this is one of a series of different models and of course we have the VJ machine which is currently manufactured in Queensland Australia so once again there are different models. Now moving right along to a different country, the USA, they manufacture a whole host of different machines, different models. But the two most popular machines tend to be this fastening machine which is called a Facetron and then we also have another fastening machine called the Ultratech as you can see here. Both these machines are easily purchased and can be serviced so it really makes a good proposition for any gem cutter in the USA. Now talking about machines that are not as popular they tend to be these type of machines. This is a Raytex Shaw and they do not have a mast unlike all the previous machines and here we have a Stirling machine and they work on the principle that they have a handheld piece that sits on a base plate that can be elevated or can be lowered and here we have an example of what a handpiece looks like. So this does not attach to a mast assembly. So let's have a look at some of the basic functions of a mast fastening machine. Now this machine is very simple. Most machines tend to be similar where you have a fastening head which sits on a mast. This mast can be maneuvered forwards and backwards with a lever of some type. Just simply loosening and tightening and here we can have a look at the mast where it contains the protractor head and the height adjuster and that all sits on the base plate of the machine. So as you can see my fastening head which has the protractor which adjusts the angles to cut the facets on sits on top of my height adjuster. Now this can be lowered and heightened by just a couple of simple knobs. So let's have a look at what is known as the cheater. On most fastening machines it will have a cheater and the cheater makes micro adjustments either to the left or to the right and it usually moves your quill assembly so you can make those tiny little adjustments so you can get the facets to meet. 
So let's have a look at the quill assembly and particularly the index wheel as you can see now. Now all fastening machines have an index wheel of some type which is usually attached to a quill and that quill rotates on the shaft within the fastening head. Now occasionally you will need to replace the index wheel. All index wheels have various amounts of slots or teeth cut into them but not every index wheel will suit a particular gem design so sometimes you will need to detach the index wheel from your quill. Now there are some machines where the entire quill and the index wheel are all one piece and you cannot detach the wheel so you might have to get another one piece assembly and that will slide onto the shaft but most machines will have an index wheel and you'll be able to unscrew it and then replace it with a different index wheel. So on my fastening machine there are only two screws that mount the index wheel to the quill and it's just a case of loosening them up with the allen key and then pulling them out and just detaching the wheel from the quill. So once you've taken off the index wheel and you want to change it out for example with another wheel it will be just a case of locating the guide pins and just clicking it back into place and then screwing it back on. So once the quill is now reattached to the index wheel it's just a case of sliding it onto the shaft of the fastening head and then tightening the two retaining screws. Now some machines will have more than two screws or might be another way how you lock it onto the shaft but it's a pretty simple sort of process um, but you will need to do that if you're a beginner faceter you'll have to learn how to use your machine so I guess my machine is a good example of something that is quite simple so if you're new to faceting and you're trying to work out your faceting machine at least now you can see how the index wheel is attached to your quill and of course with the quill we need to put in a dop stick now we will go into more detail in future videos but basically you put a dop stick within the quill and at the end of your dop stick you will have a gem or a rough gem glued to it. Now to lock in the dop stick there's usually a locating pin and then you tighten the dop stick with a grub screw. Sometimes you'll have a chuck at the end of your quill and you can just tighten it up like a drill chuck and then you'll start to adjust the quill by using your protractor. Now the protractor will determine the angle you're cutting your facets at. Okay if you're buying your first machine whether it's second hand or brand new make sure that it comes with a master lap particularly if it's a detachable one like the one I've got. So this master lap will detach from the shaft and it's held down by that spindle. Now take note that the shaft has a reverse thread on it so that spindle needs to be turned the opposite way than you would normally turn a screw onto a bolt. It's got that reverse thread so just watch that when you're putting the spindle on to lock down that master lap. So the whole point of the reverse thread is that when the plate is rotating clockwise it doesn't loosen the spindle as we're cutting a gem. So as you can see the quill is set at a certain angle. Now to cut that facet at a certain angle we need to be able to adjust the height of the protractor head and this is done with the height adjuster and as you can see on my machine it sits on the mast and I just simply lower it. So I'm turning clockwise to lower it but on some machines the height adjuster will sit right on top of the mast and you may need to turn it anti-clockwise to lower the entire assembly onto the plate. So when you buy your machine make sure that it comes with a stand and a water container 
and also some machines for whatever reason when you're buying them second hand are missing the splash guard within the pan that has to come with the machine as you're going to have water splashing everywhere or you may need to make your own splash guard also when you're buying your machine there's a few accessories that should come with your machine and if you don't have these accessories for example these are the dop sticks then you're going to find it really hard to cut a gem make sure you've got a good assortment of dop sticks some that will attach small gems and large gems and very important that you have your 45 degree adapter which I'm holding now and you will need these two components when you facet the table often machines are not sold with dop sticks and the 45 degree adapter and I think you should have all those components also when you're buying a second hand or a brand new machine make sure that it comes with a good selection of index wheels preferably it has a 96 index wheel with it else you're going to be limited to what designs you can facet also a very important piece of kit for your fastening machine when you buy it is a transfer block or a transfer jig now you will need this item and it will make life very difficult at times if you don't have it so make sure your transfer jig comes with your machine last but not least make sure that you have a drip tube for your fastening machine as you can see there is a tube running from the back of the machine down the back of the table that will release all the water and debris from the pan of your machine whilst you're gem cutting make sure that tube is quite wide you don't want a six or seven millimeter tube else it will get blocked up with debris so there we have it folks our first introductory video gem cutting for dummies for those people who are new to the world of faceting you've just bought your first faceting machine or you want to buy your first machine delving into the world of gem cutting can be scary for those of you who are just a recreational gem cutter and just want to have a bit of fun and cut a few gems that's what this series will be about helping those people just unravel some of the mysteries and some of the fears associated with gem cutting i'll see you later it's bye for now